Hi there, I'm Kath, and I welcome you to my channel. I have been away for a little bit, but I might be coming back a little bit more often to do things like this, just little chit chats about things that I think might be helpful to others who perhaps are people who call themselves Christian, or perhaps you're wondering what makes us Christians tick. What do we believe about certain things? And the main point of Christianity is us being reconciled back to, to God through believing in Jesus Christ and following after him. But what does that actually mean? Why did Jesus come? What's all this all about? It sounds very confusing. Well, let me tell you a little story, shall I? As we're going to go over 4,000 years of time. So hold on. No, this isn't going to be a 500-part series, trust me. When God created the world, he had one thing in mind, and that was to create a world that would be full of love and peace and the relationship and where people would feel fulfilled and that they had a purpose for existing. He created man and women, both in his image, not just so he could enjoy their fellowship, uh, but so he could pass on his legacy through them down the generations. But Adam and Eve listened to the lie of an enemy who said that God was withholding from them and that if they ate from the tree that God asked them not to eat of, then they would be equal to God and they would know all things. Now, they broke the covenant with the God who gave them everything. They were living in paradise all because they lusted after equality with their creator. And as a result, God had no choice because they ate of that fruit to remove them from the garden because all, all the knowledge and all that they took illegally broke relationship and broke them as as well to the point that if god allowed them to stay in paradise forever they would have not been able to bear that weight but god never stopped loving them he never turned his back on them and he never stopped reaching out even through their offspring down the generations you see god had a plan in in place he began to set that in motion, uh, the process to restore that heart relationship back with, the, uh, with his creation. He would be the peace broker. And so he sent his son to the world, a sinless man and God wrapped up in one body. His name was Jesus, and he showed us the way back to the Father, he gave us an example by the way that he lived his life for 33 years. His, but the example that he set was accumulated in his final and glorious act on our behalf. So as sinless man took the punishment for our sins on the cross, his blood spilled on the cross paved the way back to the father by his resurrection he paved the way for our eternal re reunion with our heavenly father for we too will be re resurrected one day the path back to god was made whole and complete but it is up to us as individuals to accept the terms of the covenant that god holds out for us as individuals. All we have to do is admit that we sinned. What is sin? Is sin an uh, innocent mistake? Is it a oopsie? I didn't mean to do that. Uh, no, we have all made de deliberate choices in our lives where we have placed the needs of ourselves above the needs of others. We have all chosen fear over courage. We have all deliberately lashed out at others through anger, bitter words, and resentful hearts. 
we have all chosen to manipulate others so we could get what we think that we deserved because we weren't going to get it any other way. We have all at times taken the easy way out when integrity would have de demanded that we admitted that we messed up and then cleaned up our own messes. But when we confess our sins to God, he is faithful to forgive us of those sins and to cleanse our hearts, cleanse our minds, and to restore us back into full relationship with him. When we accept Jesus into our hearts, what does that really mean? It means that we surrender all of our hearts to him and say that, he now is the one who's going to be leading the way we think and the way that we act and the way that we live our, our lives. Does that mean that we're all going to be puppets doing whatever Jesus told us to, to do? No, not at all. But when we do choose to surrender our lives to Christ, he will give us the keys so we continue to walk with him and walk lives that are blameless before God and man, and where we'll be free from the shackles of hidden shame and guilt. So what do you do? How can you do this? What's this all about? It's so simple. It really is. Just take a moment and those areas in your heart and in your mind right now that are saying, oh my gosh, I don't think God will ever forgive me for those things. And then the next thing is, well, it wasn't that bad because it wasn't as bad as the other guy. But deep down inside, you know that things you've had shame and guilt over, just confess those things to, to God. Just pray, which is basically just talking to God, saying, God. I really messed up and I have been living with shame and guilt for so long over stuff that I have done. And I really need your help because I simply cannot break those patterns of sin in my life by myself and I give up. At the moment you say those words or form them the way that you would like to, God rushes in, forgives you of your sins, scoops you up, washes you clean, removes guilt and shame from your life, and then gives you the strength to walk day by day with him. When you accept Jesus as your Lord, you're not accepting him to be your dictator, but you are giving him permission to guide you and to lead you into ways of doing life that will ensure that you never have to walk back into that guilt and that shame ever again. Maybe you're thinking, I don't know if I can ever stop sinning. Did you know that Jesus actually said to people that he healed, he says, go and sin no more with a loving caring God give you the command to do something that you're, you're just not able to do, not at all. Remember, in the, the Bible also says this, nothing is impossible with God, and that includes living a blameless life. So I would encourage you to reach out to somebody in your network of friends who calls themselves a Christian and tell them that you just prayed this prayer. And if you have got no one to talk with, get a hold of me. You can message me on Facebook or on Instagram, or perhaps you know me through other net networks. I'd love to talk with you.